This is my amazing drawing of a skateboard. Doesn't it look fantastic? So I don't know if you ever played a game called Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, it's a game I used to play when I had, back when I had my PlayStation 2. I played it all the time. Uh, one of my favorite games. But uh, So there was a trick Tony Hawk pulled off called the 900. And he was the first one to pull it off on a, uh, on a ramp. So the way the 900 works like this, if, if Tony Hawk go, goes up the ramp facing this direction, the skateboard's facing this direction, Tony Hawk was able to do a complete rotation, which counted for 360 degrees. He was able to do a second complete rotation. So the first turn was 360 degrees. The second turn, that added up to 720 degrees. Uh, and then Mr. Tony Hawk was also add able to add one one more half of a rotation so that his skateboard was now facing down, ready to go back down the ramp. That adds up to 900 degrees. It's, it's two and a half rotations adds up to 900 degrees. Okay, and when we study rotations, um, and believe it or not, there's a lot of rotations that goes on in trigonometry. I know trigonometry is the study of triangles, but you're going to find there's a lot of rotations that go on as well because in trigonometry we're studying circles just as much as triangles. But at any rate, there is a standard way um, when we study rotations, there's a standard way for us to draw it in math class. It is called drawing an angle in standard position. And standard position not only allows us to draw kind of basic simple angles like acute angles less than 90 degrees, this standard position allows us to draw angles over 360 degrees, okay, up to and over 360 degrees as well. Let me zoom in a little bit. So our goal today is to be able to draw angles in standard position. So when you draw an angle in standard position, you actually are going to use an x-axis, y-axis. We're going to draw it on the coordinate plane. Now an angle is really just the distance between, um, the, opening up, uh, the opening distance between two rays. Or there's always two sides to an angle is another way to think of it. So in standard position, we always draw our first ray of our angle along the x-axis in a positive direction, and this is called the initial side of our angle. And that initial side is along the positive x-axis. Okay, so in standard position, our first ray is always going to go right here. Okay, now you can draw it in an unstandard position where that first, that first side is kind of can be anywhere. But in standard position, this is what we're looking at. Now, when we go to draw an angle, we're of course also going to need to draw a second side or a second ray. Here, I'm going to just draw a ray going up in this direction, and this second side or second ray is called the terminal side of the angle. So these are our two sides of the angle, the initial side and the terminal side. And it, of course, can go um, in any of these quadrants. Okay, Remember, a coordinate plane, you have quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So this particular angle, is the terminal side, is in quadrant 2. But it can, it can go anywhere. Now the last thing you need with a rotation is, as, we're, as we draw an angle in standard position, we are very concerned about which direction this angle opened up. Which is, of course, very, it's really important to know if something is rotating this way or this way. So what we do is, is uh, whoever came up with this made the decision that we are always going to consider counterclockwise, which is kind of rising up from the initial position. We're going to consider that the positive direction. Whereas um, if, if an angle were to open up uh, clockwise, which would be going down from its original position, that is considered a negative direction. So when we go to draw an arrow, it's not only very important that, that we figure out where these two sides go, it's also important for us to know which way did it open. So in this case, I'm going to say that this angle opened in the positive direction, so I'm going to draw a directional arrow that's opening counterclockwise. And that's what this last little kind of curved arrow represents. This angle is positive. It's opening in a positive direction counterclockwise. We would call this a positive angle. Okay. So let's look down at our examples. And 
I'm going to do the first one, and then I would encourage you to get out a scrap sheet of paper and try the others on your own. Draw these angles, and then state the quadrant of the terminal side. Um, well, let's start with 50 degrees. So I'm always going to start, every time, I'm going to draw my initial side along the positive x-axis. And then let's think about 50 degrees. I know here, my first quadrant, quadrant 1 here, goes from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. And so 50 degrees is going to be roughly in the middle. Now it's going to be a little bit closer to the 90 than it is to the 0. So this doesn't have to be perfect. I don't expect you to get like a protractor out. But I'm going to draw my terminal side here, kind of in the middle of quadrant 1. And then since this is a positive 50 degrees, I need to draw a directional arrow opening up like this. This is positive 50 degrees drawn in standard position. At this time, go ahead and hit pause and just get out a scrap sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be perfect. When I grade these, I'm mainly focusing on do you get it in the correct quadrant. But go ahead and hit pause at this time. Give the rest of these a try. Let's see how you do. Hit pause. And here are the solutions to the first four. You'll notice that 210 degrees, sometimes I think it's helpful to, to make a little drawing like this on your paper. We notice that 210 degrees is in between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, of course, is closer to the 180. So this uh, angle is going to fall square, uh, it's going to fall in quadrant three. Of course, it's going to be a bit closer to the 180 than it is to the 270. Um, now with our negative angles, I think it's helpful to have a little drawing that goes in the opposite direction. Um, that would kind of look like this. I'm going to draw a negative 360 here. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So our negative angles here, negative 45 degrees falls between 0 degrees and negative 90 degrees. In fact, it falls right in the middle of 0 degrees and negative 90 degrees. So I drew it like this. Since it's negative, my directional arrow shows it opening downward or clockwise. And then negative 280 degrees, negative 280 is in between negative 270 and negative 360. Of course, it's going to be closer to the negative 270, but it's going to be right here in quadrant 1. You can see how I drew my terminal side, and of course, it's a negative angle. So that directional arrow must go this way, showing that the angle opens downward from the initial side or clockwise. Um, let's do these last two together then. So 540 degrees, here I can imagine when I do one full rotation like this, that's 360 degrees. And so what I need to find now is what's called a co-terminal angle to, three, to uh, 540 degrees. If I take 540 degrees and I subtract 360, I am left with, left with here with 180 degrees. So this means, this means that 540 degrees is co-terminal to 180 degrees. And so this means that my terminal side is going to fall exactly where the 180 degrees would fall. It's going to go right here along my x-axis. But I had to take an extra spin to get there. And so when I draw my directional, directional angle, angle, or I'm sorry, my directional arrow, I'm going to add a whole extra kind of spiral. There's th here's the first 360 degrees plus an extra 180 degrees. Um, I'm going to add a whole extra spiral to get there. And you know one thing I forgot to do? I forgot to mention, so this angle fell in quadrant 1. This angle was in quadrant 3. This angle is in quadrant 4. Uh, this angle here fell back in quadrant 1. Now an angle like this, you can't really say it's on any of the quadrants. We would just say it's along the y-axis. Now let's look at this last one. This one, 5 pi radians. Now some people know radians enough to just draw this, you know, knowing what radians represents. But for most of us, we're going to want to convert this to degrees first. Remember, degrees is just radians times 180 over pi. So let's convert this to degrees first before we try to tackle it. The good news is, is that this pi cancels out with this pi. And my in degrees, this is just 5 times 180, which is 900. So if it's easier for you, think of this as 900 degrees. 
Now, I do want to find out what 900 is coterminal with. And to find coterminal angles, you can just subtract 360 degrees until you get to a good position. So the coterminal angle to 900 would be, if I subtract 360 from here, I get 540 degrees. And let me subtract 360 degrees one more time. 540 minus 360 is 180. So what I'm saying here is that 900 degrees is coterminal to 180 degrees. So in other words, I'm going to draw my terminal side in the 180 degree position, but then I'm going to count the number of rotations it took me to get there. One full rotation is 360. A second full rotation, that adds up to 720. Oh, and there's our 900 degrees again. We actually talked about that with Tony Hawk. Oops, sorry. This is two and a half rotations, and since it's positive, it needs to go in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so there is all six of your answers. Let's slide down to example two then. So example number two says, says sketch 100 degrees in standard position. Oh, and by the way, yeah, this, this is on the Y. The, sorry, these were on the X-axis, I apologize. Uh, both of these fell along the x-axis. It's not in any quadrant, it's just along the x-axis. But here, um, sketch 100 degrees in standard position. Okay, there's my initial side. So I know 100 degrees is a little bit past the 90 degrees. So it's going to open up roughly here in quadrant 2. Then it says, find the measure of four additional angles that are coterminal with 100 degrees. Well, all we have to do here Coterminal angles, you can either add or subtract 360. So if I add 360, I get 460 degrees. You know, a 460 degree angle would have, the terminal side would be in this position as well. It would just have an extra rotation. Um, from there, I can do it again. I can add 360, and that adds up to 820 degrees. That would also be a coterminal angle. And see, I can keep doing this as well, or you're also allowed to subtract 360 degrees. You know, if I took 100 degrees minus 360, it's negative 260 degrees. And negative 260 degrees, the angle would be in this terminal position just as well, just the, the opening would be downwards. Um, all right, it doesn't matter which way I go for the last one. I'm just going to take 820 plus 360. Uh, the last one I came up with was 1180. If I do 820 plus 360. And so all of these angles, you would draw all of these angles the same along with 100 degrees. The only difference is how many little kind of swirls you'd have to have in between. Now, you can also do this with radians. So um, in degrees, coterminal angles are always 360 degrees apart from each other if you're talking about degrees. Now in radians, the difference is uh, these angles are all one, or I'm sorry, two pi radians apart if you're talking about radians. So here to come up with four additional angles, what I'd have to do is take this three pi over four and add two pi. Now if you remember anything about fractions, you know, I, I can write this as like two over one pi. 3 pi over 4. To get a common denominator, I'd have to multiply the top and the bottom of this by 4. Another way to write 2 pi radians is 8 fourths pi radians. 8 fourths is the same as 2 pi. So I could write this as 11 pi over 4. Or I could, and then I could take this answer and add another 8 pi over 4. That would make it 19 pi over 4. Those would be coterminal. I could add another 8 pi over 4. That would make this 27 pi over 4. That would be coterminal. Of course, I could also do subtraction. I could take my 3 pi over 4 and subtract 8 pi over 4. That would be negative 5 pi over 4. So in radians, we could say all of these angles would be drawn the exact same way. 3 quarter pi, I think that's equal to 135 degrees. It's going to be over here right in the middle of quadrant 2. And so all of these angle measures, when we initially, when we go to draw them, the terminal side is going to be right here. The only difference is how many rotations exist between them. 
All right, and I want to end today's video showing you this little um, web page that I, that I linked to in the instructions um, and how it can help you. Whoops. So if you look at uh, so if you look at assignment 4.5, let's go to like question. Um, let's go to question three. Which graph shows a negative 145 degree angle in standard form? So I know negative, my directional arrow needs to go down. I know it's either going to be this one or this one. I'm going to go right here as my choice. If I want to check this, I can go to the web page, the web page that, that I just linked to. And it allows me to kind of click and drag. Um, it allows me to kind of grab these points, click and drag. Um, make, I can do positive direction or negative direction. And I could check negative 140 here. And I know it gives me kind of two arrows. Let me try to simplify this to just, and I'll just put this one at 90 degrees so it's kind of out of the way. Um, but yeah, you can see this blue angle that I have here, negative 140. I know that I made the correct choice. Okay, And it's even helpful as well as we get to these larger angles that are over 360 degrees. So this asks which graph shows a 700 degree angle. Well, if I go to my little web page here, if I start spinning in the positive direction, there's 180, 360, um, over, I'm getting over 500, uh, okay, 700, 700 would be right here, uh, I almost got it, okay, and so now I can kind of count the number of loops that I have, that would be, um, if my math is correct, that would be almost two full rotations, it's one full rotation plus an additional, um, an additional, it looks like, um, 60, an additional 340 degrees. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to look for one full rotation and then an additional, yeah, I can tell right now it's going to be this answer right here. I have my one full rotation plus almost a complete second full rotation as well. Now, this will also help um, when you find uh, co-terminal angles. Okay, let's look at question eight. It's like two angles that are coterminal with a 300 degree angle. Well, here, if I set like my blue angle at 300 degrees, what I can do now with my green angle is I can start matching my green angle with the blue angle, and I can find these coterminal angles. It even says right here, these angles are coterminal. Negative 60 degrees is coterminal with 300. Likewise, so is negative 420 or negative 780. Now I could also spin in the opposite direction. Um, if I spin in the opposite direction I see here that 660 is coterminal with 300 or 1020 degrees is coterminal with 300. Same as 1380. So go back to my choices here. Um, I know I had negative 60 was one of my choices, 660 was one of my choices, so those are my two answers. I know I had the, uh, here is the, uh, here's the 660 right here, and here is the negative 60 as proof, okay? So uh, this little web page can really help you. Um, I think it can really help you on this assignment. Uh, best of luck on this assignment. Wish you the best. Bye.